there's no one beside you second Sunday in February. Good to have you all here in the sanctuary as well, watching on Facebook and also YouTube TV. Um, we appreciate you joining us on this morning for this Sunday morning service on the Super Bowl Sunday, I should say. I know you probably have some activities and festivities later on today for the Super Bowl, and don't forget about that important day tomorrow as well. I think it's an important day, Valentine's Day. You might want to keep that in mind as well. But again, thank you for joining us on this morning. Our scripture lesson this morning will be coming from Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Please join us in the reading of God's word. And it reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. 
For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word this morning. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Father, we come, oh God, thanking you, oh God, for another week, oh God, that you allowed us, oh God, to come to the house of worship, oh God. Lord, we ask you right now, Lord God, just to continue, Father God, to give us mercy. Father God, we ask you, Father God, just to be with our children, oh God. Be with our families, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh God, we ask you right now, Lord God, to be with our bishop, oh God. First lady, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask you to be with the members of this wonderful church, oh God. Oh, Father God, we ask you to be with folks everywhere, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we just ask you right now, Lord, to touch them, oh God. Oh God, give them what they stand in the need of, oh God. Oh God, bless our praise team, oh God. Have mercy upon them, oh God, in a special way. Be with our deacons, oh God, hallelujah. Have mercy upon them, oh God. And Father God, we ask you right now, Lord God, to have mercy. Father God, we thank you and we love you. We magnify your name, oh God. Father God, we ask it all, son. In your son Jesus' name, Lord God, we pray, Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord and good morning, everyone. We are so glad to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. And we're so thankful for those who are watching on the E-Church. We're so glad that you tuned in this morning. I echo the sentiments of the songwriter that said, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us, let us, let us exalt his name together. Put your hands together.
healing in the rock. Blessed be the rock. Hallelujah to the rock. Glory to the rock. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. I will bless the rock. Salvation in the rock. Hallelujah to the rock. Blessed be the be the rock of my salvation. Whenever you're in trouble, I can go to the rock. That rock will never move. I can run to the rock. There's safety in the rock. Hallelujah. Oh, Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Bless, hallelujah. Blessed. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock. I'll run to the rock. I'll run to the rock. I'll run to the rock. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is the rock. Jesus is my rock. Jesus is my rock. The rock of my salvation. The rock of my salvation. The rock of my salvation. Hallelujah to the rock. Hallelujah to the rock. Hallelujah to the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. And we know this one. We sing it all the time. But we will praise him. I will praise him. Hallelujah. Glory. Jesus, Jesus, bless 
is worthy. Jesus is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Praise Him. Praise Him. Mm-hmm. Praise Him. Oh, praise Him. Jesus, Jesus. We call Him, we call Him Jesus. morning I'll call him when I need him I'll call him his name is Jesus power in the name power in the name nobody like Jesus nobody nowhere nobody nowhere oh I'll call him I'll call him out Jesus I'll call his name Jesus, 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 Jesus. Get down on my knees and lift my hands and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, I call him Jesus. I call him. Hey, I call him. I call him. Woo! I call him. I call him. I call him. I call him, I call him. I got to testify for a moment. When I walked in here this morning, the usher can tell you, I could barely walk up the steps. I had an accident last weekend and I could barely walk. But as you can see right now, I have no problem walking. I have no problem running. I have no problem jumping. The y'all that were here last week, You saw me limping last week. The ushers asked me what was wrong last week. It's not fake. It's real. Jesus is real. So I call him Jesus. Yeah, I call him. I need him. And I can't live without him. I praise. I praise. I praise. I praise, I praise, I praise. Blessed, blessed. Be Wasn't that wonderful? Thank you, Jesus. All the blessed people in here, just wave at me and say, praise the Lord. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad. Anybody glad to be alive today? Amen. This is the day. The Lord has made, and we are just rejoicing, and we're so happy to see you here today, and we just thank God for all that he is doing. Amen. We have so much to be thankful for. We're living in such uh, trying times, challenging times, and it's a time that we must understand the priority of having a prayer life. If you don't have a prayer life, you're in trouble because you need to be able to talk to somebody about life as it is now because we are living in challenging times. Amen? Can I get one witness? Hallelujah. And, and uh, we have been experiencing so many, many things. So we have to uh, understand that uh, we have to pray. Uh, Jesus teaches us so much about prayer 
That is just amazing. Jesus uh, teaches us uh, so much about the need for prayer. Hallelujah. And how if you don't pray, uh, you are in trouble. Today we'll be talking about the fact that Jesus had to pray. Can I get a witness? Some of us would like to think that because uh, Jesus was God manifest in the flesh that he didn't have to pray, but he came to this earth with a mission. He came with a purpose, and that was challenging. And, and that, that's why you have to know that when you're going through, you need to know that you can go to God in prayer. And you can call on the name of Jesus. Today, uh, we're going to be uh, talking about a, a prayer of surrender and obedience. There are times in our lives when we have to understand that the only thing that's going to get us through what we're going through is prayer. If you don't pray, you're going to faint. And the Bible is clear. We ought to pray and not faint. Because if you don't pray, you will faint. Because we will be tried and tested. Amen. Today, we'll be going to the book of Matthew chapter number 26 and verse uh, 38 through, I believe, verse number 41. Amen. Uh, I want to uh, talk to you today uh, about Jesus having the need to surrender himself and pray in obedience. If Jesus had to pray, what about you and I? Uh, and he was the son of God. He was the son of God. Uh, Jesus, uh, I'm going to talk today uh, about uh, Jesus' prayer of surrender and obedience. It's important for you to know that uh, uh, if Jesus had to pray a prayer of surrender and obedience, we too, because he was the son of God. He came to this earth with a mission. He came to this earth with a purpose. And sometimes when you're living by purpose, it's challenging because uh, uh, you have to uh, sacrifice some things. You have to give up some things. You have to know that you have purpose. I look at somebody and say, you have a purpose. Uh, you have to know that people with purpose don't belong to themselves all the time. Uh, can I get a witness? People that uh, have purpose understand that sometimes purpose come before your what you want, what you want, what you want to do and all. And you have to know, and I'm talking to somebody today, uh, God told me to tell you that he created you with a purpose. Somebody say purpose. You have to know, hallelujah, that there are people in situations that are dependent on you. And God has you in place in order to meet needs, listen to this, that other people can't meet. Oh, come on now. There's some things that you can do uh, that others can't do. Look at your neighbor and say, I know that's right. Uh, hallelujah. There are some things that God has equipped you with that others can't do. And he has a purpose for your life. Before there was a then or there or when or where, God saw you and he has placed purpose on your life. Somebody say purpose. Hallelujah. Jesus came into the world with the purpose. Hallelujah. The Bible says it like this. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. 
Jesus came to this earth with the purpose. Hallelujah. He came and he knew that he had a purpose. And hallelujah. And we have to understand that God knows what he is doing. Uh, Jesus was born in a manger, born of a virgin, born in a manger, but he had a purpose. Sometimes uh, people look at you and, and say, well, uh, he don't look like he's that important. He don't, don't have no, uh, uh, look like he got a bunch of money or nothing. But God chooses whom he will. And God told me just for a second or two, uh, talk to somebody about purpose. Uh, God chose you and you came into this world with purpose. Uh, that's why sometimes people don't understand you because you can't do what other people do. You can't do everything other folks do. And God has chosen you for tasks that sometimes seems impossible. Uh, uh, that's why the Bible says you are the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. You make a difference. Hallelujah. And God has chosen you. Now, most people don't understand that. Most people don't understand. They just think, well, she's just a little smart sometimes. He's just a little gifted sometimes. But before there was a when or where or then or there, God saw you. And he chose you. He chose you be because he was putting something in you that was special. Uh, uh, even though uh, man didn't know it, uh, Jesus came into this world for a purpose. They thought he was just Mary's boy, but he came into this world with a purpose. I, I, I want to drive this point today. Uh, each of you God told me to tell you he has purpose for your life, purpose for your existence. Now, listen to this now. Everybody's not going to accept that or understand that. They will see you as just ordinary, you, you're just this, but you need to know that you have been chosen by God. Uh, your steps have been ordered by the Lord. And God has a purpose. And that's why some folks look at you and say, you're just lucky. You, I, I don't know. You're just lucky. I don't know why it is that you always come out on top. You always, but it's the hand of God uh, over your life. God has purpose. Somebody said purpose. He has a calling on your life. And that's why some people say he's just so smart. He's just so in. Tell you, he always end up winning. Hallelujah. Because if God is on your side, he is on your side. Now, uh, the scripture that we've chosen today, uh, Jesus uh, uh, speaks, and Jesus is called by God. Let's go to Matthew chapter 26. Uh, Matthew chapter number 26, verse number 38. Jesus came born of a woman and God uh, sent him into the world for a purpose and, 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 and there's a time when there's purpose there's a time for that purpose to be fulfilled. Matthew chapter 26 verse number 38. Uh, Jesus knew that he had purpose. That's why he came and had the ministry that was given to him by God. Hallelujah. And, and, and uh, uh, he had the last supper with his disciples. He commissioned them. And, and, and it was time for him to understand and to know that he came to give his life. Mm. And that's why uh, uh, in, in, in verse uh, Matthew 26 uh, verse number 38, uh, after uh, Jesus came to understand uh, what his purpose was and, and, and so forth, hallelujah, he had come to train his disciples, to train them and teach them, and there was a time, uh, and then he came to that place where he recognized, hallelujah, that 
he had done everything that he had come to do. He, 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 Jesus, at the Last Supper with his disciples, he talks about, it's finished. It's, it's, almost, it's almost my time. Now, now the Bible says at the, the Last Supper, Jesus and his disciples was finished. He predicted the betrayal by Judas. He knew that things was coming to the end. He observed the Passover, instituted the Lord's Supper. Uh, he didn't tell Peter uh, the denial uh, as they made way to the Mount of Olives. Jesus and his disciples then come to a place called Gethsemane, uh, a garden outside of the city across from the Kidron Brook and the Mount of Olives where the olive press was, a place where Jesus often went to pray. Uh, hallelujah. So now uh, it's time for Jesus to do what he's been called to do. Let's, let's, let's look at Matthew chapter 26. Let's begin at verse number uh, 36. Uh, because he knew that he came to give himself. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. Verse number 36. Uh, Matthew 26 and 36. And said unto them, uh, said unto his disciples, sit here while I go and pray. See, he knew what his purpose was. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee that began to be in sorrow and very heavy. Because it's, it's time he has to prepare himself uh, to give his life. He came to sacrifice. He came, uh, verse number 38, uh, 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 then said he unto them, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tear ye here and watch with me. Now we understand that Jesus has got to get a prayer through. Uh, that's why you can go to him when things are not going well, because he understands what it means to pray when it's difficult to pray. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. You ever had a time when it was difficult to pray? Uh, Jesus understands. You can go to him during those times. Uh, Tarry here with me. Uh, watch with me. And verse number 39, he went a little further and fell on his face. Uh, saying, Father, oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thy will. He knew that his time was coming. He had to go and offer himself. And he said, this, if it's possible for this, because, see, the flesh didn't want to die. Flesh don't want to do things. That's why... Uh, people of God have to learn how to get a prayer life because there's some things that we got to go through in life and God's going to get us through, but we got to have a mind to go to God and say, help me, help me, help me get through this because hallelujah, the Bible is clear. The temptations that we come upon are not uh, something that's unique. They are common to man, but God will make a way of escape. I don't care what you're going through. God will get you through it if you trust him, if you stand on him, if you believe his word, because he said in the word, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake. I want anybody to believe that. God will be with you. The Lord God said, I will, I will be with you. The latter clause of, of, of verse number 39, nevertheless, not as I will, but uh, as thy will. And he cometh to his disciples and finding them asleep. See, sometimes you need a prayer partner. Jesus needed the brothers to pray with him, but they were asleep. I wonder, have you ever needed somebody to pray uh, with you and you couldn't find nobody and you realized that the Lord Jesus was right there with you? Uh, the songwriter says he's just a prayer away. And he said it unto Peter, what could ye not watch with me one hour? Jesus was preparing himself to go to the cross. And he wants somebody to pray. 
Hallelujah. But he couldn't find nobody. And verse number 31, he said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. Hallelujah. Uh, and that's why you got to pray and fast and believe and stand on God's word because God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Verse number 42, he went again uh, the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Uh, it's a tough prayer. Uh, sometimes some things we have to face. Sometimes some things we have to go through. But we need to know that God is with us, the Lord Jesus, because he went through this, you can go to him in prayer. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Uh, and he went again a second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Wow. He accepted the challenge, and he said, I, I, if it ain't going nowhere, let your will be done, because I know that you love me. See, you got to know, anybody here know God loves you? And no matter what he allow you to go through, he's going to go through it with you. He's going to get you through it. Hallelujah. And that's why you got to have a prayer life. You got to know how to talk to the Lord for yourself. And most of the time, by yourself. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Verse number 43, and he came and found them asleep. Let me go back to verse number 42. And he went again, second time, and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Verse 43, and he came and found them asleep. Sometimes, hallelujah, the Lord uh, allows us to be by ourselves. Because he wants to teach us something about the fact that he will never leave us. I wonder, can I get a witness? Somebody wave at me if you know he'll never leave you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And, and, and you have to know that because we are going to be tested. This prayer uh, that Jesus prays is a prayer of surrender and obedience. He has surrender. Thy will be done. And then a prayer of obedience. He came and found them asleep, for their eyes were heavy. See, he, 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 he wanted them to pray with him. He wanted them. And God told me to tell somebody, uh, you got to learn how to uh, get a prayer through by yourself sometime. You got to learn how to get a prayer. Because the person you depended on to pray for you needs you to pray for them. See, uh, every, everybody have their days. Everybody had their challenges. And you need to know the Bible is clear. The Lord said, I will supply all your needs according to my riches and glory. I, I, I'll do what I need to do. Jesus, listen to this. Jesus didn't want to go to the cross. His flesh now, I'm talking about his flesh. His spirit was willing, but the... See, that's why you have to know there is a war in your members. Sometimes the Bible says like this, when I desire to do good, evil is present. And that's why you have to understand that I got to know the word, I got to stand on the word, and I got to know that the Lord will keep me. He will guide me. He will direct me if I hold my peace and keep my eyes on him. That's why this prayer that Jesus prays is, is twofold. It's a prayer of surrender. Thy will be done. Help me surrender. And then the, the other part is a prayer of obedience. I got to go to the cross. His flesh didn't want to go to the cross. Come on. And, and he, he said in verse 43 again, he came and found them asleep for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went again and prayed the third time. Jesus prays the what? Third time. Somebody said, I done prayed for that once. No. If Jesus had to pray three times, you, 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 you might have to pray six times. The old folks, you sing a song, keep on praying. The Lord is now. Keep on praying. He'll hear your cry. 
Uh, you got to know that if you pray, the Lord will. He, he left him and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same words. Somebody said, I don't say it that one time. But look at Jesus. The Bible said he prayed three times and prayed the same thing. You got to understand that your prayers make a difference. Hallelujah. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep on now. He done bothered them three times. And they, he said, Go, y'all fellas, take a nap. Y'all ready to sleep? Just go ahead and rest. Uh, take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of the sinner. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. There's some things that the Lord allow us to go through. And there are times when we have to know that he is with us no matter what. I'm talking to somebody right now who, under, who need to understand that you are not alone. I don't care what's happening in your life. The Lord said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always. You need to know that. Sometimes when you don't know what to do, you just, just need to get down and lay before the Lord and get on your knees and say, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you promised me. You said it in your word. You never leave me. You never forsake me. You promised in your word that you keep me in perfect peace. You promised in your word that you fight my battles. You promised in your word that you make the darkness light before me. And whatever's wrong, you make it right. And the high places, you bring them down. You promised, hallelujah, set before me an open door. Begin to listen to the promises of God. And remember, that he cannot lie. If he said it, he's going to do it. Can I get one witness in here? Uh, because sometimes we are being tested and we are being tired, uh, tried. Hallelujah. We are being tried in so many areas of our life. Gethsemane, the garden of Gethsemane, was Jesus' test. My question to you is, what is that challenge that he has for you? Because all of us, let me give you a scripture for what I'm going to say. The Bible says, all that live godly shall suffer what? Persecution. There are going to be some days when uh, we're going to be persecuted for righteousness sake. Ain't did nothing wrong. But you got to know that God promised never to leave you. Jesus went to the garden of Gethsemane by himself with his disciples with him, but they weren't really with him. They were, they were there. They didn't really understand Listen to what I'm finna say. There's sometimes you're going through, and the people that are around you may not understand what you're going through. But you got to know, hallelujah, that your prayers make a difference. Mm. Uh, you have to have a prayer of surrender. Uh, you have to say, thy will be done. You know the devil can't do nothing to you that God don't allow. Can I get a witness? Uh, this prayer that Jesus prays here is a prayer of surrender and a prayer of obedience. Thy will be done. Let thy will. He goes to the garden. And actually, the men that went with him, they didn't really understand all the essence of what he had to go through. Can I, can I, can I expound on that just for a second? Some things in life God's going to allow you to go through, and the people around you won't understand it. But you need to know that the Lord Jesus said in his word, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you always. And his word said, I'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind on me. He said, I'll make the darkness light before you. Whatever is wrong, I'll make it right. I come to tell somebody today that God's got a blessing. God's got a time. Hallelujah. Don't worry about your adversary. Don't worry about your enemy because God is in charge. And Jesus tells us to come boldly to the throne of grace that we might find help in the time of need. You got to know, hallelujah, the Lord promised not to leave you and not to forsake you. Jesus experiences something Hallelujah, with his disciples, and they didn't really understand all what he was going through. 
Oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. There's sometimes there are things that God wants you to understand and know and experience that you can't explain to folk. They cannot understand. It's just for you. Sometimes it's there for you to teach somebody. Sometimes it's there for you to pray for somebody. You, you, you know the, the responsibility we have to pray for one another. Because God will show you somebody and say, she's going through this. Pray for her. Now your flesh will say, let me go over to her house and talk to her and see what's going on. Let me, sister, I had a dream about you. What's going on? Tell me. And the Lord said, no, I didn't tell you to tell her. The Lord said, and then sometimes the Lord would tell you to tell the person for them to pray for you, pray with you, rather. But there are sometimes the Lord said, uh, this is just between you and I. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you Lord. Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and actually, he was by himself, even though his brothers were there. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. And the Lord, hallelujah, uh, was doing something. The Bible say he went to pray and he was accompanied by Peter, James, and John. And the Bible says in Matthew 26 and 37, he was deeply distressed. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Troubled and deeply distressed. The Bible says in, in, in Luke chapter 22, he was in so much agony that sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. Uh, he endured. He knew what was happening. He knew what was coming. He knew he was going to the cross. And uh, he, was, he had to be told three times, hallelujah, his disciples, hallelujah, he had to talk to them and he had to deal with them. Because they didn't quite understand, but he understood what the Lord was doing. And you know what? There are times when the Lord allowed us to be uh, isolated. When I say isolated, I mean by ourselves, with somebody, but really by ourselves. Because he's taking us somewhere. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. In the garden where the Lord took him, to uh, 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 place him, Hallelujah! Jesus was uh, uh, there by himself. He prayed. He fell on his face. He said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Not my will, but thy will. Hallelujah. If this cup cannot pass, let your will be done. Because I know that you're going to go with me through it. You're going to see me through this. Hallelujah. Uh, Jesus teaches us how to pray. Hallelujah. Uh, and, and, and I want to say this before I uh, quit. Uh, you need to know that, that, that the Garden of Gethsemane, where all this happened, was a place of suffering, but it was also a place of strength. Can I say that again? Uh, some of the difficult things that we go through in life strengthen us and take us to another level. It was, the Garden of Gethsemane was a place of suffering and a place of strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to understand that. Uh, notice what turns from a place of suffering into a place of strength. Let's, 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 let's look at that just for a moment. A place of suffering can change and turn to a place of strength. Hallelujah. Uh, because, hallelujah, because of your prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The four things that turn the place of suffering to a place of strength. Prayer. Uh, uh, that, that fervent, persistent prayer. Hallelujah. Prayer uh, that submit to the will of God, number two. Hallelujah. Number three, prayer that strengthens you. Hallelujah. And prayer that enables you, number four, is to uh, be able to drink the cup, to be able to deal with it. Folks look at you and say, I don't know how she do it. I don't know how you're doing it. But hallelujah, during those times when we pray, God does something special. And he takes us to a place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the scripture says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, it says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. 
Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. I'm going to read that again because it's, it's important. The Bible said, don't be anxious for what? Nothing. But in everything. Pray about everything, but don't be anxious about what? Nothing. And, and with thanksgiving, always thank. The Bible says, in everything, give thanks. Let your requests be made known unto God, and God will give you peace with surpassing all understanding that will keep your heart and your mind. You know why that's true? Because uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 14 through 16 tells us that we have a high priest. See, and then we have a great high priest who's passed into the heaven. The priest is the one that makes intercession. Uh, Jesus, the son of God. Jesus now becomes our high priest. Hallelujah. It says, instead of throwing in the towel, let us hold fast our profession of faith. Say, we do not have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Hallelujah. He can be touched. He can feel what we feel. But with an all point tempted as we are. Jesus was tempted in every point. So when you're going through loneliness, when you're going through betrayal, whatever it is, he said, I've been there. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. The Bible says he was tempted in all points, like as we are, yet he did not sin. As a result of that, he says to us, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain grace and mercy to help in the time of need. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Are you going to make it? Are you going to get through? What kind of prayer do we need to pray? What kind of prayer do we need to pray in order to get through? A prayer that pleases God. Uh, what kind of prayer? A prayer that's offered to be seen, not a man. That's the first, that's the first characteristic, uh, the prayer that pleases God. A prayer that's offered not to be seen, uh, offered uh, to be seen of God and not men. Matthew 6 and 6. Number two, offered to be heard of God and not men. First seen of God and next heard of God. And then number three, Offered in a merciful spirit, hallelujah, persistent faith and humility. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Today, as we think about what God is saying to us, I want you to know Jesus teaches us, and I want you to understand that the priority is prayer I'm asking God to guide me to direct me lead me so that I can do what he's called me to do bow your heads with me as we pray father in the name of Jesus you said you would never leave us you said you'd never forsake us help us to understand that you are the source of of our healing both physically emotionally bless us to understand that we need to pray a prayer that pleases you Lord a prayer that's offered not to be seen or heard by men but to be seen of God a prayer that's offered to be heard of God and not of men a prayer offered in a merciful spirit of persistence and faith and humility. Thank you for being a rewarder. Thank you for, hallelujah, keeping us. And thank you for teaching us today that if Jesus had to pray, we got to pray and not faint. Not faint. Somebody say not faint, not faint can't faint I can't faint I can't faint Lord help me Lord help me to understand 
that you made provisions for me because I'm praying for my family. I'm praying for my spouse. I'm praying for my children. I'm praying for my siblings. I'm praying because you said ask. You said knock. You said the door would be open. Thank you, Lord. Bless us now. Keep us now. Guide us and direct us. Walk with us now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I need the oil. I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Somebody tell the Lord, thank you. Lord, I can't make it without you. I can't make it without you. I need you. I need you every day. I need you. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Oh, God, I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you glory. Because if it wasn't for you, Lord, I wouldn't make it. Thank you, Lord. 